Um, there are few parasitic inhabitants. We will need to take this in account because sometimes for people who have not been tr very well trained, this can look as a conceptacle and it's not. It's a parasite. But even over <coughs> the multiporate conceptacles, you can see a surface view and a cross section, and this is a uniporate. There are particularities among the species that we will take in account for identification in the laboratory, but maybe also in the field, especially if we, if we are successfully finding a lot of differences in the surface view of the species, because they will make easier to everybody identify things. Um, for some of the taxa that we will be working on, we will need desperate the gametangial phases because at some genera, you need to know if the spermatangial conceptacle is simple or branched, or the position of the carpogonia, which is like the equivalent of a zygote in a red algae. The position of these filaments is relevant to the species name. But for identifications, you don't need those kind of things. I needed to put in the name. Then you can use the tetrasporangial to use or identify the name. <clears throat> Currently, we have three families in the, Coralina, in the Orden Coralinales. Coralinesi is the one who has uniporate. Apalidasi has multiporate. And Sporidasi has sori. So it's a kind of an easy way to identify things. And there are several subfamilies who has uh, three or four features to identify themselves, like uh, the transparangial boring conceptacles that are uniporate, sonately arranged tetraspore, or applica apical plux absent. And there are a group of features that we will be putting into the uh, guidebook to help the people to identify things in the more uh, typical scientific view, but also we will try to build up a user-friendly key based on uh, local features that maybe uh, it will be more easier to, for the people to identify. But we will try to put both because this will be aimed maybe for more academic work in this, for students. And the other one will be more helpful for the layman who wants just to see what is in, in their particular backyard. So the goal is to familiarize persons who have never looked at crystals calling to notice how they grow together, what features are important to remember or emphasize, and make crystals calling clear in their morphology and association with other species, including coral animals, by associating them in the ways that they are usually found by publishing an identification guide. The main goal of this project is by January next year, we, have, we will have to be ready to publish an identification guide who will have a lot of pictures and a lot of uh, features that will help the people to identify coral algae, the common coral algae in the Hawaiian Islands. To furnish a nomenclatural accurate list of coral species that have been previously been reported for, from Hawaii, and to combine this with the species that we currently collect so that it will be possible to use other literature and know how to use names, those names, coincident with the current classification. Well, the long-term goal will be to produce more monographic work in the Hawaiian colonies. After being in the four islands, I can tell you that there are quite few species that are very common. I am getting very interested into the relationship of uh, freshwater runoff into the ocean and the distribution of coral in algae because uh, I, as any other um, coralline or um, calcium carbonate producer, the pH or the alkalinity of the seawater will be an issue for the development and photosynthesis, and accurate photosynthesis. And, but also I, I have seen a lot of things that, at least for me, after being in a different places identifying coral in algae, seems to be like a new species that it might be uh, widely distributed here. But there are also a lot of common species from somewhere that no, nobody has been putting attention to the local area, and that they are very common in the Hawaiian uh, coast. Particularly, I have found a species from the genus Sporolithon, the one who grows in soil ice, who is typically known for the Indo-Pacific area, especially Australia. And you have here in all over the coast, this is very common. So the key, um, or the guide, will <coughs> should have, um, well, the, the position of the subfamily and the name of the species in the top 
But uh, feel for us to show people how they look at their wallet, and maybe we will need to expand more this idea because maybe in Maui we will see in some way, and in Kauai the species will be in a different way. This is something I need to discuss with my copy I, uh, to work more, but definitely we will have more close up pictures, not this blooming one, but more detailed pictures to show the surface view of these particular plants. And also the sections, because always the sections are nice and will lead, if somebody will try to get uh, the classify and section of the plants in some ways, uh, some of these particular cells, uh, subepithelial cells, will tell you this is Hydrolyton Samoense and you don't even need to see the concept of Colaria or anything else. You see this thing, you see the cell fusions, non flooded Hydrolyton Samoense, very common in, in uh, coral reefs. And well, we will try to put a little bit of description, species description, to make people understand how the species uh, is uh, variable, um, especially based on Hawaiian plants. We will try to do more ecological and geographical distribution, if they are associated with corals, rocky areas, free living, um, if they are all common in the four islands, or are three or four, or how they are distributed in Hawaii. And I always get interested in local names. I don't know if Colin Algae has been putting Hawaiian names, but I will keep an eye on those things, because in our area, when I start doing my, my research on marine botany, people tend to say, oh, we don't have local names for, for marine plants. And after, after 16 years I've been doing my research in Mexico, I have at least, for Colin Algae, six to 12 local names. So it might be, it might be. I just keep an eye. Because this will link to the local culture that I think is a really important among scientists to understand the local culture and the historical uses of uh, any seaweed along the coast. Uh, in our area, coral algae is really relevant because this is where the fishermen will start fishing for a scallop. And uh, worldwide, um, free living algae will be linked with the scallop uh, fisheries and with uh, their recruitment. So, that's why in our area is so important for the fishermen. <clears throat> Once we can settle the coronary algae taxonomy, we can um, start to collaborate with people in wider application, like uh, long-term studies on algae marine invertebrate interactions. We talk about Avalon in Mexico a lot, but here will be sea urchins, if there are good enough gorgonians, corals, and not, but not also in relation to the uh, recruitment also in relation to the feeding habits, maybe related with fish. In Mexico, sturgeon fish usually will eat coral in algae to use them to <coughs> grind other seaweed that they are eating, and they can take advantages that also the coral in algae will have some calorific value for them. Uh, monitoring protocols, coral in algae, become, because they are permanent in rocks and in, in coral reefs, they can be monitored really, uh, quite often and see not short-term not short uh, changes, long-term changes. <clears throat> Fossil color in algae is one of the things we are getting into Baja California soon because these algae are the quite few that can be fossilized. And because the calcium carbonate structure of the algae, you can uh, start doing um, isotope studies to understand more the <clears throat> global warming paths in relation to the modern coral algae in relation to the historically deposit uh, coral algae. So this is something else we can do. I hope as part of our project the biodiversity of coral algae will be better understood in the Hawaiian Islands and I can expect that we will be rising the number of species, not because of the, the as a part of a goal, it's because of recognize this area of the world is, has been isolated for long enough to have their own coral in flora. And also, the, um, historically, I, I like to work on biogeography, and I think this particular group of seaweeds will tell us a nice story about the biogeographical trends among the islands and the link with the geological history. But this is just the starting point, and I think uh, it will be a good project to develop. Thank you.